What are you doing? As long as you can see your face, it's fine. We'll bring it closer then. All right, we got three viewers. We'll go through some of the questions that were posted to us on our Reddit post. So quick introductions. This is Sevan and Maria from the Armenian Crypto School. We're gonna do an English, ask us anything, or you can ask us whatever you'd like to know about cryptocurrency or specifically Dash or maybe even other cryptocurrencies. And if we know the answer, we will ask it. Um, if I say something, that is sort of obscure. Uh, I've asked Maria to kindly uh, ask for clarification on you know, what it is I'm saying or why I said the thing I said. So let's get to it. So the first question that um, someone asked us in, in the Reddit uh, post on, on r slash dash pay uh, was about quantum computing uh, and whether or not it's a, a risk to cryptocurrency and just our general thoughts about it. And um, to, read my, or to repeat my answer there, basically, I'm not an expert on it, but my understanding is that, um, so, so let me just explain what the question means to people who aren't really familiar with it. If, if you're just into cryptocurrency, you might have heard things such as um, quantum proof uh, cryptocurrency or stuff like that. So, so what exactly does it mean? So for cryptocurrency... Uh, a big part of cryptocurrency is obviously the cryptography that goes into securing the the networks and uh, making sure that the ledger is uh, coherent and no one is is basically uh, messing around. So the the concern is that in the future there'll be these quantum computers that are much more powerful than our existing computers, and they'll be able to. Uh, essentially crack the encryption for our favorite cryptocurrencies and they'll be rendered obsolete or or totally broken, right? So um, my response to that is that it's a legitimate concern, supposing nothing were to be done, um, but with quantum computing uh, being used to break encryption, it makes just as much sense that it can be used to create encryption. And so someone actually responded to the Reddit question saying, yeah, here's a list of, of quantum uh, derived encryptions uh, algorithms. So, so I think, the, I think, I think quantum um, is not really a concern. And, you know, it, it, Dash, the network will be able to finance the use of a, a quantum computer if necessary. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if if we all don't own quantum computers whenever they come out and they become consumer goods. So um, so that was the first question. It was gi given to us on Reddit. And I see we have three people in listening. So uh, I hope that you guys came with questions and you'd like to know uh, you know more about cryptocurrency. So please share with us your burning questions. It doesn't have to be something complex like what is quantum uh, cryptography, quantum computing, whatever. So uh, put that in the live chat. And since I don't see anything yet, I'm going to uh, respond to the second question that we got on Reddit, which was about uh, specifically Dash's inflation rate. So with proof of work cryptocurrencies, they um, issue new tokens. So Bitcoin is the token on the Bitcoin network. Dash is the token on the Dash network. Um, Ether is the token on Ethereum network, right? So with these proof of work networks, they issue new tokens um, with each block. It's it's the block reward is uh, part of it is the issuance of of new tokens, and so that new token, right? Uh, if you it, through the economic lens, is is inflation. It's in, it's it's inflating the number of tokens in the system, and uh, Bitcoin recently reduced its inflation rate, and now it's around two percent a year which is great, 2% annually. And um, the Dash one, I looked it up, is around 6%. So Dash being a younger cryptocurrency, it hasn't um, had as, as, as long to reduce its inflation rate, but it also has a different mechanism by which it reduces its inflation. It does it um, in, in chunks of 7%. 
every so often, I think maybe like half, you know, every six months or something. So it, it's more regular, but it actually um, is higher, the inflation rate. So that that's a that's one downside for Dash right now. And there's conversations within the Dash community about how to address that, uh, ways of, of rebalancing the inflation uh, between the miners, the master nodes, and the treasury. So um, we still don't have any other questions. Do you have any questions, Maria? No? no? Come on, you ask questions all the time. All right, maybe you'll come up with one. If I come up with one, I'll let you know. Okay. So, yeah, again, guys, please share questions. There's no dumb questions. And if there is, I will let you know and make fun of you. The um, And please put them in the chat, right? You got some questions? Put it in the chat. So those were the only two questions we were asked so far. Uh, and I don't want to hang up on our, our five beautiful listeners right now. So uh, another thing that you know, we can teach you while you're here is uh, about the the impetus, the thing that inspired this Ask Me Anything. So we were uh, informed by a friend that they heard about this project and they wanted to know about it because they know that we're into cryptocurrency. And they said, what do you know about Bizcoin? Uh, they do a live video every night or every so often. And the founders... Uh, talk about it, explain, you know, answer questions and whatnot. So, oh, that's a good marketing idea. Let's look up what is Bizcoin. It, it sounds ridiculous. It's a stupid name. Let's see. And it is totally a scam. So if someone tries to sell you on the idea of getting into Bizcoin, watch out. And uh, I guess so that's opinion, I suppose. But the learning part is how did I come to that opinion? So um, a lot of red flags when you go to Bizcoin. So the first one is that it show you can look at its white paper and its white paper is purely marketing. The white paper doesn't explain what or how uh, it is or it's planning on doing. It's super high arching. And essentially what it is, is an Ethereum token. They just issued Ethereum token called it Bitcoin, And they claim that they're going to basically uh, become like the medium of exchange and just like the future of money. And they're going to tackle all these different um, business use cases, uh, but they don't explain how. Um, and then, and basically all their uh, initial functionality is just, um, a function of it, of, of the Bitcoin token being an Ethereum issued token, an ERC 20 token. So, uh, a, a beginner won't know that they're going to think, oh, this is cool. There's like a built in exchange and I can do all these things with the token. How cool is that? But like, it's, it's got nothing to do with Bitcoin. It's basically, they spent probably 20 minutes building the token cost them, I don't know, like maybe $10 worth of, of Ethereum, of Ether with the Ethereum money. And, and, and then they spent mark, you know, they started marketing it. And then, so there's, they're scammers. So just watch out. Um, oh, this is great. We're getting some questions. Okay. Richard De Silva. Oh, I recognize your logo from the Dash Discord. It's good to see you. All right. So how do you see the industry, uh, can move away from centralized crypto exchanges where the prices of all the currencies are heavily manipulated? That is a burning and important question. Yes. So for uh, anyone who, who, who doesn't know that this is a problem, it certainly is. Uh, basically, it, it's really weird, right? Because it's like you could be super into Dash. Let's say you're like a masternode owner and you have thousands of Dash. Your input into the price discovery has already happened, right? You, 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 what happens to the price tomorrow unless you sell? You're, you're out of the equation. All of the price discovery is happening, or not all, but a lot of it is happening on these centralized exchanges that do lots of shady things to manipulate the perception of trade volume, who's buying what, where, when, how, right? So um, I think the obvious answer is that we want to see DEXs or DEX or you know decentralized exchanges take hold, and you know I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist because what this is kind of off the top of my head I haven't thought it through too much, but I wouldn't be surprised that we haven't seen more decentralized exchange activity because of the sort of existential threat it is to Bitcoin. Because the way a decentralized exchange works is that the transactions that are happening, they're happening on the blockchain. They're not happening in a closed system on a centralized server like at Binance, 
or hit BTC or whatever, Coinbase, right? So every trade is actually hitting the blockchain and there's a transaction fee associated with that. And that transaction fee, if it's something like Bitcoin, is going to be so prohibitively expensive that there's no interest in that. So a cryptocurrency like Dash can handle it. Cryptocurrency like Ethereum, probably not. Cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, definitely not. So um, I think that the technology needs to improve so that the decentralized exchanges are easier to use. But there are some nice ones already that exist uh, that people have decent success with. People, Some people like Waves. Um, BitShares was popular for a while. Uh, I don't know what's happened to that one so much. But I think even more than that, there's a kind of the cultural thing where like the crypto community needs to, to want it and uh, ask for it. And I think that as long as the focus is on like number goes up, Bitcoin maximalism and uh, stupid stuff like the halving, halvening and like the focus on that instead of like important stuff like how do we make this money even freer and more revolutionary, which is what the decentralized exchanges entail, we're not going to really see a big change yet. So that's that's something that we, the Dash community and crypto community can definitely push. And whenever we see a decentralized exchange that really can back up with decent technology as a challenger to the finances of the world, I think we should all jump on it and make it make it what it can be. And it's really exciting because I hope it's right around the corner. Uh, we have Anon Numis. Nice. Is Dash's higher inflation rate really a bad thing considering the total supply will be lower than Bitcoin's total supply? Circulating supply is also far lower than Bitcoin's. Well, I, I, uh, it's a good question. I would say it is a bad thing because it impacts the, the, the economic, the, the price discovery, really, like the, in the short term. In the long term, if you're comparing both and you say, look, there's less Dash tokens and, and they should be more expensive for that reason, I think that's a reasonable fundamental analysis when you look at, at the cryptocurrencies. And I think um, like we see Dash pump crazy, crazy hard because it has a low supply. So once once the the interest for Dash exceeds its inflation rate, we see it like go crazy high, and then there's other factors associated with that as well. But um, I think if there was less inflation rate, we would see the price going up at a like um, kind of more steady rate up, basically. Have I said anything yet that doesn't make sense to you? You're my you're my BS detector. You have to tell me. Um, so thanks for the question. I, I hope I gave a reasonable answer. Um, but I mean, there's one thing that you know you do like about Dash is that like there there's less of just physically less of them around. So we're early in the game still. So if you have some Dash, that's cool because you know it, it's a scarce thing. Uh, I don't really buy into the whole Bitcoin narrative that like Bitcoin is valuable because it's scarce. You know, like like you know this this is valuable to me. Um, it's not valuable to you because it's scarce. It's valuable because like it does stuff, and to me, it's mine. I, I value it. But like, just something, just something alone being scarce is is like a is is sort of a ridic ridic ridiculous, like deductive reasoning that uh, is for simple-minded people. So, uh, Hilawe, please discuss the economic situation in Armenia. Oh, great question. How fast is the currency being burned there? So. Um, Armenia is a rough situation economically when it comes to crypto specifically. And I'll get into that. But just to lay some base context is that Armenia is sort of in the nexus. It's in the middle of a bunch of empires, really. Or not empires, but like big forces. So you got like Iran on one border, Turkey on one border, the EU, Russia. And then you also have American influence. Um, and it's all tied together by the diaspora, which we, you know, the diaspora is like the Armenians all over the world, right? So um, Armenia has been having a post-Soviet hangover for a long time since the Soviet Union broke down. These are just my opinions. Not all Armenians might agree with me, but like it's really uh, the problem is you have a, a population of people that were educated by communists and they didn't really hate it. Like in Ukraine, in Georgia, which is a neighbor of Armenia, they did not like Russia and the Soviet Union and communism. So they were reactive to it during the period of time. They, they sort of fought it. 
And then afterwards, they were quick to abandon it. And they, they did really relatively well compared to Armenia, um, which really took a long time to reverse. And basically, the mentality of, of, of like the Soviet Armenian person was kind of like, you know, uh, in, in the Soviet times, there were lines. And the people that got ahead were the ones that cut the lines and had the connections. And so in the post-Soviet world, it was that same, like, whoever was the most corrupt would be the best. And that's so that you basically got a system of oligarchs. And it was just like systemat sy systemic corruption. So um, recently, I don't know, it was two years ago, there was the Velvet Revolution, which is promising uh, if you're an advocate of democracy and you believe in the democratic process. Me personally, I'm not so sure I am in like a believer of that, but it's definitely better than uh, the oligarchy, I would say, and, and the this absolute corruption and sort of being a puppet of Russia, which was, which was sort of the, the, the situation at the time. Nowadays, it seems like Armenia is sort of at this inflection point where it's going to decide who who are its, its trading partners and its allies. And it has lots of people courting it. China, the US, the EU, Russia, uh, Iran. So... Um, Hopefully, you know, no one's really listen, uh, listening to my opinion about it because I haven't been asked per se, but like, hopefully they don't pick one partner. You know, they, they go the Switzerland route and they do business with everyone and everyone's invested in Armenia and that shields them from a lot of the political tor turmoil that uh, potentially could be associated with picking like one big trading partner. Um, but as, okay, so let's relate it to cryptocurrency. Um Basically, there's this de-dollarization program that's going on in Armenia, and it's been going on for I don't know how long. Um, I, mean, I couldn't tell you, but basically, the policy is that you can't you can't pay for anything in anything other than the Armenian drum, which is their the Armenian currency, right? The drum. So um, they did this because people were paying in U.S. dollars, uh, because people were sending remittances in U.S. dollars, and it was. Uh, basically taking away control of the economy from the government. The government wanted power. They didn't like that. So um, if you wanted to go into like a cafe tomorrow in Armenia and pay with cryptocurrency, technically it would be illegal. So I don't know of many other countries that are having this level of problems with crypto adoption at like the storefront level. Um, so... You know, one thing is about crypto that's great is that like it just very easily circumvents those rules. So if you're an online worker in Armenia, you can get paid in crypto and, you know, like good luck trying to stop you. But like getting to the brick and mortars and getting um, more adoption is going to re require either, you know, um, a change in politics, change in policy or something really radical, which the Armenians are not ready for. Um, we're the we're the biggest and first Armenian crypto um educational program really there's we know of one other and um you know like we're, we're, we're really early to the game relative to armenia because they're they're really behind the times but the good thing is what we're seeing is there's a lot of interest so uh we find that encouraging and we're hopeful that with the interest can come um you know, people sort of poking the government and saying like, it's, it's time for us to re rethink these things and uh, get hip to the future because like Armenians have this great history of being, um, you know, like a merchants, this, we had a trust network of merchants around the world, like the, like the Jews. And uh, I think that crypto and the Armenian diaspora is like a perfect combination where we can really sort of reinvent that, uh, that heritage in a way that, could uh could help armenians and i mean any i think any group of people individuals families or countries whoever is adopting crypto first i think are going to thrive so you know that's that's our impetus is we want our fellow armenians to 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 thrive and prepare for the, the future all right we have one more question let's see do you know andrew henderson oh yeah you know you love that guy Really? Oh, apparently his wife's Armenian. Really? Oh, I didn't even know he was married. <laughs> yeah, cool. So we'll have to, maybe we'll contact him and, and uh, see what he says. We, You've watched some of his videos. I mean, what has he said about Armenia? And what do you, do you think he's, he's right? I've watched his videos about Armenia. 
Uh, watched it about Georgia. About Georgia, yeah. Spending a lot of time there and talking about investing there and how it's a good idea. Just watching it. Cool. Yeah, I think it is easy to open a bank account. Maybe I don't know. I mean, Even right? Yeah, I think you need a passport. Um, oh, maybe know. not. I don't know, but I. I, because, um, mm -hmm. I know that because my mom had to open a bank account and she had to get a passport. But, yeah. This is the girl in the thumbnail. She's pregnant. She looks a little different. More beautiful. <laughs> Fertility goddess. A bit swollen. A bit swollen. Huge. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess people are interested in Armenia from the investor nomad capitalist perspective because it's sort of this like it's turning the corner. There's a lot of uh, foreign investment that's getting attracted to it. So I'm not surprised that that someone who who's catering to that audience of people like figuring out where to send investments would. Uh... Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, congratulations. So yeah, it's exciting. We're do it. We're due any day now uh, to have the baby. Uh, but yeah, you know, so so I, I guess there there is interest in people investing in Armenia. Um, so so that's all good. I mean, definitely not an expert on Armenian though. You're the Dash Queen, the original. <laughs> Now's a good time to plug that, I guess. We have Dash Queen is another project uh, I've been working on that's going to come out soon. Uh, and it's a online beauty contest. We have an app. Uh, yeah, here you can describe it while I. You're gonna get it. Okay, I'm gonna make my pregnant wife go get it. So, so Dash Queen's a, a monthly beauty pageant, and anyone can submit a photo. And in the photo, you know, you write dashqueen.com on on your body or in the or somewhere you know you could put dash queen somewhere so that we know it's it's an actual picture and you're also going to submit a um dash address right and in the future your dash username but for now just your dash address and people who who look at the content can vote on who they think is the most beautiful and they do that by sending dash so this is um, a prototype. It's basically done, and we're gonna launch it to the to the Play Store soon uh, for Android, and then eventually for iOS. Um, but basically, the way it works is you, you have pictures of these of these models, and you're like, "Oh my, I really love this model. I, I like her vibe. I love the way she looks. Uh, she is my Dash Queen." So so what I wanted so so the, the vote with Dash thing. So. This is really like a proof of concept in, in a lot of ways because it shows you what like an accountless app can look like. So in this account, people are submitting photos about themselves with their Dash address, but they never create an account. And then the viewers don't have accounts either. So no one's got accounts. It's just going to be identity through your cryptocurrency wallet. So someone's basically saying like, this is my picture. I'm proving that it's authentic for, specifically for Dash Queen. And... Uh, here's my Dash address where you can you can pay, you can vote for me and you vote for me by paying in Dash. So you know right here there's this beautiful woman. I said, oh man, I really want her to, to win this month, Dash Queen. You can hit with vote with Dash, you know, and then it's gonna open up um, in your wallet the the Dash the Dash wallet on your phone, and then you can send payment and the the tallies automatically go up. So whoever has the most Dash becomes Dash Queen of the month. So. Um, that's an exciting project. I think it probably will cause a lot of controversy because, you know, people will say I'm objectifying women and all that. And I'm looking forward to that conversation. It's going to be very exciting because it's going to create drama. It's inherently sexy because it involves sexy women or sexy men, whatever. And it's going to create, yeah, Dash Kings. Maybe that's the next extension. And, you know, it's going to, it's going to create, um, a conversation about, like, why are these women doing this? If it's so bad, you know, and you're so offended being a uh, first world feminist and you're upset by like the fact that these women are submitting photos, objectifying themselves. Well, why are they doing it? You know, if it's obviously so bad and they're doing it because girls love sharing sexy photos, especially Latina girls, especially. And then, you know, on yeah, on Instagram and, and they're not getting paid. And so there's. Yeah, so I'd rather get paid than likes. You know, pay pay me all all day if, and don't like me, right? Uh, but you know, and then there's this subset of women in Venezuela and Colombia and 
you know, lots of other places that are starting to get hip to crypto and they can spend that crypto and the supermarket. So it creates a pretty compelling story about how far crypto has gone, where it's, you know, it's gone beyond uh, the, the neck beards of the world into like the super hot chicks um, like this one. So, um, so that'll be fun. Dash Queen, it'll come out soon, and you'll you'll see an update about it for sure. So, um, I guess you know we have a few more people that just joined. If you have any questions, please please ask it. Otherwise, I'm going to be wrapping it up soon. So, um, just to give you guys an update about about the Armenian Crypto School, we just finished our second semester content. We grew our Facebook page. Um, yeah, we have 6,100 people uh, up from, I think, like 2,000, maybe a few months ago. And we only spent like a couple hundred bucks uh, doing like Facebook boosted posts and ads and stuff like that. So uh, our, our goal is to, to keep the page growing. It's our own issue. We're not going to go to the Dash DAO to grow our page. Uh, but we do have a really nice Dash video that the community really, um, you know, they vibed with it because it was, it was pretty on point. And we're very appreciative of that. We like that our hard work uh, was well received. So we have that same video that you've seen in English, in Armenian, and eventually we'll probably uh, solicit the DAO to uh, promote that video specifically to all the Armenian speakers on Facebook. Facebook is a central online destination for Armenians in particular. The, the Velvet Revolution, which we referenced earlier, was actually coordinated on Facebook itself. So like Facebook's, Facebook's an institution in Armenia. And, and if we do a boosted post, we're pretty confident that for not a lot of money, um, we, we can get basically all the Armenian speaking world on Facebook to see the video and learn about Dash um, and, every, and everything about it. So that, that, you know, I don't know when we'll do that. Next cycle, cycle after, whenever it makes sense, we'll, we'll submit a petition for that. So um, keep an eye out for that. And uh, since I don't see any other questions, I want to thank everyone. We'll do. Th I had fun doing this. I don't know if you did, but I had fun doing this. So we'll probably do it again a week from now or maybe a different day. We'll pick a different day and different time so that we can get more coverage. But I think the community really should uh, consider doing these things because, you know, Dash is a super great project or and crypto real cryptocurrencies are incredibly revolutionary and exciting and a game changer. And we need to um, not let just the scammers like BizCoin get in front of people and use decent talking points, which is that the Federal Reserve and the central banks are corrupt and they're stealing your wealth, blah, 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 blah. They are, but the solution is not scams. Yeah, the solution is legit crypto and we need to be the people, not us too, only like the whole community needs to come out and, and talk about it. And it's been great. We've had a lot of people come out and say, hey, we like what you're doing. We want to help. Can we join you on the thing? And we, we politely declined. But you know, I think everyone, if we have enough interest, we could probably do an, an Ask Me Anything every night for beginners. So uh, if we, if we, if we kind of socialize this as a thing and we, and we think it's valuable, uh, this might be something we can explore. So uh, I'll give a few more seconds or minutes for anyone to ask questions. Anyone comes late. But uh, I want to thank everyone that asked questions. They were very thoughtful. And everyone that watched and, and gave a thumbs up, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, we'll just, we'll, just, we'll just hang out for a few minutes and see if there's any other questions. Trying to, yeah, I'm trying to think what else we can plug or educate people about. Um, we, we were recently interviewed by Tao of Satoshi and I kind of use that as an opportunity to get on the soapbox, um, and really encourage everyone to research about the, uh, decentralized finance, um, white paper issued by, uh, the D bank, Debnik D bank, uh, group, their website's D-E-B-N-K dot I-O. I'll write it in the chat. And they have a white paper about how Bitcoin, specifically because they're Bitcoin maximalists, um, how Bitcoin can, without issuing any new tokens, can do decentralized finance through a series of smart contracts and other things. 
And I think that Dash specifically, um, with its its use case focused on digital cash, plus its technical functionality of Dash Drive, um, is like a perfect. Uh, I don't know, not customer, but 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 th this idea is perfect for Dash. So right now. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the people listening who, you know, I recognize your names. You've been in the Dash community for a while. I'm sure you've gone out and tried to do crypto adoption. I'm sure you've tried, you've talked to business owners and it's a lot harder to convince someone to accept money than it is to convince someone to become an investor. So I pay contractors. I don't speak Armenian very well. Maria speaks it much better than me. She doesn't write it very well. So we, hired um, a lovely uh, Armenian girl to translate the scripts that I write for the Armenian Crypto School. Now, she's never used Dash before. Uh, so if I wanted to pay her, I had to not just say, hey, I, here's money, which everyone wants. Everyone wants money. But I also have to teach you how to turn that money into money that you're more familiar with. So I'm going to teach you which exchange to use and how to use it. Yeah, money that she can use and that she doesn't have to worry about the value dropping. And so um, that playbook, which is like, I want to give you crypto and I'll teach you how to turn it into fiat if you want, works. Like I've had probably like a over 90% success rate, uh, well over 90% with all the various contractors I paid uh, because people like getting paid. They like getting money. Now, if you're a business owner... Someone comes to you and they say, I want to give you money. They say, good, I love money. And then they say, also, this money I give you, it might not be as valuable you know, you, tomorrow. It might lose value and you're going to basically become an investor in this. They're going to say, hold up, I don't, I'm too busy to become an investor. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't care what you're talking about. I just want money. So with this decentralized finance proposal that the dbank.io put forth, we can have a situation where you have your just a, a normal crypto wallet that is designed to lever, uh, basically lend out the dash that you get and, and short it. So it'll do a 1x short with the click of a button. You could do a perpetual swap where basically you're no longer experiencing the price fluctuations of dash. So if I paid for a $10 burger, and I gave you $10 worth of Dash, and the next day, Dash goes to $12. Normally, no decentralized finance, no 1x short, you now have $12 worth of Dash. Now, if you do a 1x short, and it goes up to $12, you actually still only have $10 worth of Dash. And that's fine. You don't care. You sold your burger, you made your profit margin, you're happy. Now, let's say the next day it goes to $8. Now, you would have lost $2. You'd be pissed off. You'd be like, I can't believe I sold the burger for that $2. And then you go back and you try to give Dash to the guy next time. He's like, no, get out of here. I'm, I'm sick of you. But if you do a 1x short and the price goes from $10 to $8, that $2 is not lost. The value of that Dash that's been shorted is still worth $10 because someone took a trade against you, basically. They went long, and they're, and then they're losing the money, essentially. So uh, it's a really exciting idea. I think it's like the missing link for crypto adoption. I encourage everyone to look into it and advocate for it, push for it. And I see that we're still getting people joining. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Otherwise, we'll wrap up soon. And um, we'll wait a little bit. And then we'll nap. So if you just joined us, ask a question or rewind it. I don't know if you can rewind it. Ask a question in the, co in the comment section, especially if you're new to crypto, to Dash. We are here to answer your questions. Welcome if you just joined. Ask a question in the chat. No question is dumb. Ooh, we got another question. The waiter October... Okay, so Hilawi says we, we tipped a hundred dollars of Dash to the waiter at Oktoberfest. So we should have given an off ramp of sorts. Um 
Yeah, I mean, supposing the guy didn't lose it, I mean, I guess you turn you turn the guy into like a long term holder, which is not inherently bad, especially with like a hundred dollar amount. It wasn't something the guy was expecting, you know. But I think if the guy was like the bar owner and you bought a hundred dollars worth of beer for that dash, the guy's first question is like, how can I take ninety dollars of this and you know resupply my bar with booze, you know, something like that. So, so in that situation, definitely give an off ramp. It works. It really does. Because like I, I've hired a lot of people, not all of them young, some of them old and grumpy and they don't know what crypto is and they don't care. But I say, listen, I'm not going to pay you in us dollars because sometimes I don't have us dollars. I don't have, I'm not going to pay you in that, but I have dash right? Bitcoin. And they're like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know about Bitcoin. I don't like, listen, it's fine. You can turn it into US dollars. You can turn it into euros. You can turn it into rubles. I don't care. It's not my problem, but I'll teach you how to do it. I'll teach you how to do it so that, you know, it doesn't, it's not really inconvenient for you. We'll find an exchange where the fee is relatively low. And, you know, if it's really such a problem for you, you can charge me marginally more to cover the transact, you know, the, the exchange fee. Although, honestly, that's never been a problem. No one's ever raised their price because I wanted to pay them in Dash. They just accepted it and realize it's their problem if they don't want to keep it in Dash. So uh, education about off-ramps is huge. Um, you know, especially we're in this global world, there's not like one solution fits all. So you have to figure out, you know, which exchange is appropriate for them. And, and if you don't walk them through that process, it's very overwhelming, right? You have to figure out what's the right exchange, what's considered a good rate, like, what are these terms? Like, most people have never used an exchange of any kind. So, like, withdrawal, deposit, uh, these different different various types of fees, taker fee, maker fee, um, whether or not something's like a legit exchange or if it's a concierge service and there's, a, and there's different fees associated with it. These are all things that can really overwhelm someone that just wants to get paid. So, um, if you make it easy for the person and you take the fear out, then there's very high likelihood that the person will say, absolutely, this is cool. Um, in my experience above 90, maybe that's because I'm, pers you know, persuasive, but, um, you know, even if you're like, you have the personality of a rock and, and no one believes you, I, I think you'll still get the majority of people to, to accept that because you're paying them, you're giving them money, uh, that you believe in that that's real to you. And even if it's not real to them, they can turn into something that's real for them. So you should have to do it. So we got five more people that joined. Welcome. Please ask a question. This is an ask me anything. Um, there is no question that is dumb, especially if you're a new person. Ask away. What is something you've heard about that you didn't understand um, or that was counterintuitive or that overwhelmed you? And we'll talk it through. I am sure the Dash convention looked like a weird cult at Oktoberfest. There's no doubt about it. The guy's probably too scared to touch the 100 Dash that you sent him. <laughs> oh, man. Honestly, though, that was a highlight of the year. I, I, was, I was at the Dash convention with you, uh, as you know, but our audience might not. And super fun. Uh, one thing that's surprising about the Dash community is how mature and like physically old everyone was. I've been going to the crypto conferences and stuff for a long time. And this was by far the, the oldest average age. Um, I was one of the youngest people there, I would say, which is like weird. Because nowadays, I, I feel like when I go to most crypto things, I'm, I'm usually like medium age. And sometimes on the older side, people think I'm younger than I am. Um, but that was cool. It was cool getting, it was cool like sitting across the table for someone and asking what they do. And they then, you know, they would be like, oh, I'm a, a doctor of this or a master of this and, and all well accomplished, very educated people. So that was encouraging uh, that other people into Dash are, uh, you know, intelligent. Maybe I'm not making a huge mistake uh, liking it the best. So, yeah, more questions, anyone? Please, no dumb questions. I'll ask a question for the audience. Anyone find a cryptocurrency recently that was doing something very novel and 
that was very like uh, poignant, something that like is going to make an impact in the immediate future that we all need to know about and you know either uh, start using or learning about? Because everyone's an expert, no one's got questions for me. I'm going to ask you a question. I haven't heard of any. Right now, Dash is still my favorite. You know, I'm open to uh, finding something that's better. But if you want to know why, watch our "What Is Dash" video. It's been shared on Reddit. It's on our YouTube page. Uh, it's been described as 17 minutes of goodness. Uh, it's also been, uh, you know, added to the, to the Dash Pay uh, Wiki page, which we're honored and proud of because we put a lot of work into it. Um, Questions, guys, come on. <laughs> guys and ladies. I'll share with you an interesting tidbit uh, from our experience at the Armenian Crypto School is that we have a abnormally large percentage of women followers. And as far as I know, there's not many other crypto or really any other crypto communities that I'm aware of that are mostly women. But the Armenian Crypto School is mostly women. Uh, I don't know if that's something unique about Armenian women. I don't know if it's a function of Facebook uh, prioritizing women as our audience when we boost posts, because I know that is happening. Uh, but for whatever reason, it seems like Armenian women are digging crypto. Perhaps they like the agency of it. Uh, perhaps they're just curious bunch of women. I don't know. Madi says they're into tech more, which is interesting. So that would that would definitely line up. Um, but it but it's one thing that I'm hoping that we can turn into somewhat of a meme, right? So people who are really into gold know that Indian women are collectively the largest holders of gold. So like Indian women and gold are a very sticky meme. That's who I think about when I think about gold, actually. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, if we're successful with the Armenian crypto school, the same can be said for crypto and Armenian women. Uh, we'll see. It's going to be a lot of work, but I think we can do it. So it looks like the numbers are dropping off, and I haven't seen any questions. Halawi asks, are you targeting diasporan Armenians in your booths? Uh, we try to. It's a lot harder to target them. We end up sort of, the, 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 it becomes more of like a shotgun spread and we end up reaching people we, we weren't intending to reach. It, it's not quite as easy, uh, but we'd like to. And it's, it's, it's part of what it's, we try to. So the, the, the main way of doing that really is, is through like uh, the shared interest. You can kind of, uh, you can set a geography. And obviously if you're just reaching Armenians and Armenia, that's easy, but like, outside is much more difficult. So you do like an interest, like people who are interested in the Armenian language or Armenian, Armenian food. I tried that. That didn't work. We got a bunch of Arabs and um, I don't know why they were liking our page because they can't speak Armenian, but they were, they were liking our page. So that didn't work. I'm still trying to figure it out. They're definitely part of our audience. We want that. We want all the Armenian speaking world or, uh, to, to get involved. And, uh, we're still learning how to how to optimize for that, but we you know we we post stuff in Facebook pages that we know Armenians frequent, uh, pa Facebook groups. So we are we are uh, reaching out to them, and like I said, it's been going well. Um, you know, given given that the audience doesn't really know much about it, they're you know skeptical because they they've. They've heard of high pro high profile scams that have happened in Armenia. It's been a lot of like um, there's there was uh, I don't know the details, but there's like one really big pyramid scheme apparently that was you know crypto related, but it really wasn't. It was just a pyramid scheme that that happened in Armenia during the the crazy period in time where everyone was spending money on crypto left and right. So I think the like, people have this perception that it's just really shady and dangerous. So. That's been a lot of our work is 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 telling you like no actually it's it's not that scary it's, it doesn't have to be shady if you're if you're smart about how you approach it it could be a, a really good experience for you and provide financial freedom I saw we just had two people join uh, this is an ask me anything we encourage you to ask any questions uh, 
that you may have about cryptocurrency or Dash. We have a few more minutes of the stream before we hang it up. So um, I encourage you to write in the chat any questions you may have. And if you're wondering who I am, I'm uh, the half of the team that is Armenian Crypto School. I'm one of the founders. My wife, Maria, is uh, bouncing on a medicine ball because she's pregnant and feeling uncomfortable. So any questions? Otherwise, you know, feel free to rewind and, and watch the video from the beginning. And I don't know. We'll come back next week and ask your question then. All right, well, I think I'm gonna wrap it up then. I thank everyone that asked questions. They were great. This was a lot of fun, uh, thought-provoking stuff. And um, I should come up with a good tagline, I don't know. Take care. <laughs> take care, everyone. Uh, stay safe out there. Bye.